masampanayang adlaw, madawgan nga kurawon, pagkahangulang tawo, pagkarakang alawon. A pleasant day to all my brothers and sisters at sa lahat ng mga Pilipino na nanunood ngayon. I am Jesus Katigan Insilada. Igtaman is my mountain name which means someone who has so much to tell. I do hope that in this conversation I could tell you something about bailan, the bailan, colonization and healing. I am a proud member of the Panay Bukidnon Indigenous Cultural Community. The Panay Bukidnon is one of the two indigenous peoples groups here in Panay Island, Visayas Group of Islands, Philippines. The other one is the Ati. My great-grandfather on my father's side, Macario Insilada, was from Isabela and Escalante Negros Occidental, while his wife, Paulina Lial, was from Barangay Misi, Lambunao, Iloilo. My great-grandfather on my mother's side was Chudoro Ador Chiva, former, former castor, but was adopted by the Chiba family who were his first cousins. Ador married Francisca Ica Gorantes, whose roots can be traced in Maasin, Iloilo. Lolo Ador's original places where the remotest barangays of Kalinog Iloilo and Tapaz Capiz, namely Taganhin and Igtambo. I remember my Wau Ingo, my mother's father, who was a sought after manughilot or healer through massage and body manipulation, and a paltira taking the role of a midwife. He was a manugluya or healer who uses a ginger in the ritual of communicating to the saragudon or pet spirits. Pet spirits are responsible for healing common ailments such as stomach ache, headache, and body pains, and also serious illnesses. I remember my Uwao Ingo telling me that the title Bailan is the highest title a healer can get. He did, he did not want to be called a bailan. He preferred to be called a manugluya and a paltera. Uwao Minang from Leon, Iloilo, who married the cousin of my father's mother, said that to be a bailan requires much responsibility and accountability. She would also correct those who are considering her as a bailan. Her ancestors were bailan and she said, that she doesn't want to tell them that she is a bailan. She would just let time make her a bailan, a real bailan, through successful healings and rituals that she performs. One does not choose to be a bailan, the spirits do. Today, there are healers that people call bailan. Their practices have survived persecution from the colonizers. My ancestors related that they had to perform bailanism or bailanism secretly. As Christian converts, the bailan would assimilate bailanism with Christian beliefs and practices as they continue to wrestle and negotiate with different forces coming from the internal colonization. Part of the negotiation is the reimagination of the bailan because contexts have changed through time. History would tell us that bailan during the pre-colonization were mostly women and asog or effeminate men. Some became leaders of uprising against the empire forces. And then we had the Polahanes. Then they were called as cult. And now we have healers who offer services for money. They are supposed to collect a sanag or an amount or money from the heart 
for the Bailan subsistence. Today, the Panayanon continue to negotiate with the forces and changes brought about by modernization and internal colonization uh, that, uh, that have affected their families, their lives, and their communities. Their faith is highly influenced by Christianity, but they try to blend their old practices with Christian practices. One example is when they perform their panimadon during planting or before harvest. They pray and they decide according to the position of the Pakunawa or the lunar dragon, and they pray using a cross covered with black cloth. Black is a color of purity. When we pray, we use black to express our purest intentions. It is believed that when we close our eyes, when we sleep, and when death comes, there is an expanse of darkness, of blackness. It is the point towards purification. Through prayers, our transi transition to the spirit world is our transition to the purest version of ourselves.